Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel, Jesus Wants You, I'm Nikki Pratt. Listen, I know I promised you guys this video, I'm going to um, try to wrap this um, idol worship up. Um, I'm pretty sure that the Lord is done um, with me in this and bringing this much needed word forward. Um, so with that said, welcome to all my new subscribers and my current subscribers. If you have your Bibles, please get them out. So you might want a little pen and paper. Um, get it out, okay? You gotta have your word. Um, Y'all have to excuse my makeup. My little girl made my face up earlier. I have on a blue eyeshadow and highlighted with gold and gold lipstick. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. So, uh, okay. With that said, um, the title of this video, The Lord's Answer to Idol Worship, God's Call to Repentance. You got to know that if we sin in any way, form, or fashion that um, our God is merciful um, to forgive us of our sins if we repent. Correct? Amen. So the Lord is graceful. He's merciful. His grace is sufficient for all of us, for his love endures forever. He is long-suffering. He is not willing that any man should perish. But the Bible says that his spirit will not always strive with man. Amen. Uh, that's in Genesis chapter 6, verse 3 in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 6 through 7, if you have your Bible, I'm reading out of the King James right now. Um, I don't know what you have, but turn quickly to the book of Thess Second Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm going to read something to you in regards to that spirit not always striving with man. Old Testament, New Testament, he says something else about the spirit. And... Um, we went from the old to the new, and the Bible also says he determines the end from the beginning. Mm. Okay, um, she got the raggedy Bible in here again. Y'all ain't in no hurry, huh? I didn't think so. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, so... 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 6 says, And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. He might be revealed in his time. The Antichrist. But the, verse, the part of the verse that says, As Now ye know what withholdeth. The Holy Spirit. Verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now let it will let it until he be taken out of the way. The spirit is taken away. So is the bride of Christ along with it. So, um, the titles and scriptures I was led to regarding idol worship while this world is full of idol worship, things, people, exalting itself or themselves, higher before God, worshiping television shows, video games, cars, clothing, men, women, entertainers, rappers, the music industry in itself, money, etc. You know what? your personal idols are because in my other videos I told you guys to examine yourself and search your heart. We all may have 
some form of idol and maybe you didn't know that you actually idolized something until after this video, but I can assure you by the end of this video, you're going to identify what you may be idolizing and you will repent of it before the end of this video, at the end of this video for prayer. Okay, uh, the first book of the Bible and scripture I was led to in the wee hours of the morning, um, the other morning, was Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 through 22. Yes, indeed. And it reads, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, and then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. One of my favorite scriptures. Verse 15, Now mine eyes shall be open, and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. And as for thee, if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shall observe my statutes and my judgments, then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom according as I have covenanted with David, thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. But if ye turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I pluck them out, I'm sorry, pluck them up by the roots out of my land which I have given them, and this house which I have sanctified for my name. Will I cast out my sight and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. And this house which is high shall be an astonishment to everyone that passes by it. So that he shall say, Why hath the Lord done this unto this land, and unto this house? And it should be answered, because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, and laid hold on other gods, little g-gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore hath he brought all of his this evil upon them. Wow. Powerful word. Another powerful word concerning idols, but this is God's call to repentance. So after I read that in the wee hours of the morning in my prayer closet, I had this question in my head, and I went to get my study Bible and to go to Second Chronicles to look at something. And my Bible, when I opened it, fell open to this, Habakkuk chapter 2. And the title above it said, The Lord's Answer. Wow. Okay, wow. Watch this. So I'm going to read to you the whole chapter of Habakkuk uh, chapter 2. This is out of my study Bible. Um the NIV, okay? So the translation is a little different. Um, it's actually more geared to um, babes in Christ. Um, you know, the wording is easier uh, with more understanding. If you're having trouble with the King James Version, I want to read this for you, okay? So uh, Habakkuk chapter 2. Uh, it says, um, Then the Lord replied, replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets, so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits, 
and appointed time, it speaks of the end, and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. See, he is puffed up. His desires not are not upright, but the righteous will live by his faith. Indeed, wine betrays him. He is arrogant and never at rest because he is greedy as the grave, and like death is never satisfied. He gathers to himself all the nations and takes captives of all peoples. Verse 6, will not all of them taunt him with ridicule and scorn, saying, Woe to him who piles up stolen goods and makes himself wealthy by extortion. Wow. That word extortion was one of the words in the scriptures that I read yesterday concerning idols in high places. Um, pastors or leaders making business out of the church. I carry on reading. How long must this go on? Verse 7. Will not your debtors suddenly arise? Will they not wake up and make you tremble? Then you will become their victim, because you have plundered many nations. The people who are left will plunder you, for you have shed man, man's blood. You have destroyed lands and cities and everyone in them. Woe to him who builds his realm by unjust gain, to set his nest on high, to escape the clutches of ruin. You have plotted the ruin of many people shaming your own house and forfeiting your life. The stones of the wall will cry out, and the beams of the woodwork will echo it. Woe to him who builds a city with bloodshed and establishes a town by crime. Has not the Lord Almighty determined the people's labor is only fuel for the fire, that the nations exalt themselves for nothing? Nation. Wow. Wow. So the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the water covers the sea. Woe to him who gives drink to his neighbors, pouring it from the wineskin till they are drunk, so that he can gaze on the naked bodies. You will be filled with shame instead of glory. Now it is your turn. Drink and be exposed. The cup from the Lord's right hand is coming around to you, and disgrace will cover your glory. The violence you have done to Lebanon will overwhelm you, and your destruction of animals will terrify you. For you have shed man's blood. You have destroyed lands and cities and everyone in them. Of what value is an idol? Verse 18. Since a man has carved it, or an image that teaches lies. For he who makes it trust in his own creation, he makes idols that cannot speak. Woe to him who says to wood, come to life, or to lifeless stone, wake up. Can it give guidance? Is it covered with gold and silver? There is no breath in it, but the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before them. Wow. Wow. So there again, another strong word concerning idols, idol worship, and um, who we should be worshiping, our Lord, God, and Savior. Not little G-gods, idols. Okay? Um so, as we look at, in Habakkuk chapter 2, the NIV, it mentioned riches, riches, verses 6 through 13, misfortunes of others, appetites for money, taking the place of God. Mm -hmm. Verse 18 speaks of idolatry. I'm going to read to you a little something. Idolatry may seem like a sin that modern people need, to, need not fear. 
But idolatry is not just bowing down to idols. It is trusting in what one has made and therefore in one's own power as a creator and sustainer. If we say we worship God but put our trust in bank accounts, homes, businesses, and organizations, then we are idolaters. Do you trust God more than you trust what your own hands have made? Idols have no life, no personhood, no power. They are empty chunks of wood or stone, temples built to idol, idols are equally empty. No one lives there, but the Lord is in his temple. He is real, alive, and powerful. He is truly and fully God. Idolaters command their idols to save them, but we who worship the living God come to him in silent awe, great respect and reverence. We acknowledge that God is in control and knows what he is doing. Idols remain silent because they cannot answer. So for those of you who worship statues, uh, the statue of the Mother Mary and um, Buddha and the little Hindu gods and um, no, they can't answer you back. The living God, by contrast, speaks through his word. And we have seen a beautiful array of that this whole week dealing with idols. Okay? Approach God reverently and wait silently to hear what he has to say. And we have heard what the Lord has to say regarding idols and idol worship and uh, worshiping objects and worshiping leaders in high places and putting things before him. He is a jealous God. He don't like it. He wants us to put all our faith and trust in him, not our money, not our finances, nothing above him. Only him. Choose this day who you will serve. We cannot serve two masters. You either love one, or the Bible says, hate the other. And as for this house, which it should be in your house, you shall serve the Lord thy God and only him. So, with that said, that was a powerful powerful word that was um, much needed today. Much needed in, in um, this day and time because I'm just going to tell you the truth. I hadn't even been thinking about any idol worship. I've been focusing on other things, but it has made me really look at myself and kind of examine, you know, my life. Like, could I be doing any of this? Because what does First Corinthians chapter six verse nine says? Be not deceived, nor fornicators, nor let's run on over there. Let's run on over there. Nor fornicators. I think it mentions first, and then it says no um, adulterers. No, I think it says idolaters. So, First um, Corinthians chapter six verse nine. Uh, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, wow, the second, nor adulterers, nor infeminate, meaning Danish pastry, gay, nor, or lesbian, nor abuser of themselves with mankind. You see, there it is right there. There it is. So, we all know, we've been watching, those of you who are sober of the day, we've been, we know that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is coming soon. No, we do not know the time, day, or the hour, but we do recognize the signs, and it is no wonder he is dealing with us with um, 
idol worship because he said, be not deceived. You doing any of that, we will not inherit the kingdom of God. So um, please examine yourselves. If you haven't watched the other two videos, I encourage you to do so. Uh, anything you see dealing with idol, uh, with my name under it, um, from the Jesus Wants You channel, please watch it. It is a very important word for today. With that said, it has been 20 minutes. I didn't want to have this video to run long. Um, I want to say a prayer for all you guys. I pray for each one of you every night, every night. But um, I want to say a prayer, a little prayer with you guys right now. Um, so with that said, I don't know what you're doing. Bow your heads, please. Close your eyes, okay? Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word that you have given us today. Lord, we thank you for this day that you have given us, Lord. This is the day that you have made, Lord, and we rejoice and we are glad in it. Lord, we, we thank you. We come humbly, Lord, before your throne, Lord, asking for forgiveness of our sins, Lord. We search our hearts right now, Lord. We search our hearts right now, Lord, for any uh, form of idolatry, Lord, that we have we may have made um, against you, Lord, knowingly or unknowingly, Lord. We repent of it right now, Lord. We ask for forgiveness of this sin of idolatry, Lord. We bring it before you, Lord. And you said in your word, Lord, that if we confess our sins before you, Lord, you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And, Lord, if you said it in your word, Lord, you will make it good, Lord. You are not mocked, and Lord, your word never returned unto you void, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. We ask this in your Son, Jesus' name, Lord. We just ask you to forgive us right now for our sins, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus over every subscriber listening, every child, every woman, every man, every leader, every pastor, every one in the five-fold ministry, Lord, you said that if we seek your face, Lord, if we repent, Lord, you will hear from heaven and you will heal our land. Lord, I just thank you right now, Lord, for this word and season, Lord, giving me the tongue of the learned, Lord, thus speaking your word, Lord, in truth, Lord, with conviction, Lord, convincing those, Lord, that may be led in this form of idolatry, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this word and season, Lord. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, for your grace and your mercy is sufficient, Lord. And we just thank you and we reverence you right now, Lord. Right now, Lord, I ask that you bless each and every one of us, each and every one that is listening under the sound of my voice, Lord, for your favor surpasses us like a shield, Lord. I rebuke the enemy right now, Lord, that any hindering spirits that may have tried to come up and try to steal the word out of their hearts and minds, and Lord, I just plead the blood of Jesus over their heart, mind, body, and soul soul, Lord, rebuking the enemy, Lord, casting down that spirit of fear, Lord, for you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Woo! I felt that one. How about you? So, powerful, powerful word. Oh, the Holy Spirit is really, really raining up in here. Powerful word. Um, Mm. I thank him today, Lord. I, I thank him, y'all, for this word. I always pray that he give me the tongue of the learned and he lead me and guide me into all spiritual wisdom and truth. And I pray that every night, even for you. A lot of you, some of you I have met, some of you I have talked to by phone, some of you I have not met, some of you I have met um, just by chatting with you back and forth on um uh, on YouTube, you know, just commenting. And um, again, I am so grateful for um, the blessings that have been coming my way as far as growth in my subscribers. Um, you should know them by their fruit. You should know them by their fruit. Um, I hope you guys were blessed by this video. I know I was by the word. Everything that I bring forth to you, I minister also to myself. 
uh, it makes me makes me think. It makes me repent. Um, but I love you guys. I'm going to upload this video. I hope you love it. If you like it, you know someone needs this word, share it. Okay? Share it. That's the way you can become a fruitful Christian. What is a fruitful Christian? One that makes and creates another Christian. Amen? Amen. See you next video. Thanks.